Alright. So you can guess the meaning a little bit. Word breaking problem. Actually, it has some, you know, practical use in the real world. Yeah. All right. What's that? Let me describe the problem. Given a dictionary that can tell you whether a string is a valid word or not. Okay. In constant time. Yeah. A regular di dictionary. Okay. And given a string S of length N, provide an efficient algorithm that can tell whether S can be reconstituted as a sequence of valid words. That's the requirement. We need to check if that condition is satisfied or not. So what's that? So that's string. So a string, you understand you have consecutive characters, but that characters you can break into multiple words. If you can do that, then successful. Otherwise, failing. Yeah. Look at a simple example. Here we have a long string like this. Okay, a sequence of characters without any space in it. Then we can break it into multiple words. Yeah. For example, bed, right? Bed, bath, and beyond. Okay? Although people may argue you have you can have different way to break, right? Bet, hand, beyond. Yeah, it's fine. You only need to Check if there is one way to break it into multiple words. Then you are successful. Okay. Now we want to solve this problem. So you can see, if you want to try, if you can think about it, it's not that easy. Yeah. The idea is really smart here. Yeah. So we need to learn that idea. Okay. First, we still let us look at the mathematical representation. This time, our representation SN represents that whole string with N characters, right? The characters here, we want to break it into... So here, the first A1 characters, we assign it as our first word, first substring. We want to check if it is a word or not. Next, A2 characters, we want to assign the second substring, and we also want to check if it is a word or not, and so on, okay? until we go to the K. What is that number K? You know, 1, 2, 3, any positive integer can be used as that K. Okay? Yeah. Here, if we try to understand the structure, we can see it has some structure. And here, there is some constraint. The constraint we need, we create a dictionary function, dic. Let's call that function. Word checking function, dictionary. We look up that substring in the dictionary. If we can find it, it returns value of 1. If it's not a word in the dictionary, then we get a value of zero. Okay? Yeah. But for our requirement, we need all these substrings, A1, all these substrings. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let's just use all these are substrings. Okay? They're not number of characters. Yeah, as before, I call number of characters. So here, let's treat as substring. Okay? Yeah. Because when we plug in the dictionary, we need to use the substring plugin, not that number of characters in a substring. Yeah. All right. So we we get that condition. That's the problem description. Yeah. To understand that, we know we get a partition of the string. So here we use this partition concept. 
we basically we do a partition of a given string. What is a partition? Okay. The basic part partition concept. Here, the two properties for a partition we need to have. First property, whole coverage. Okay. So you put all the components of your partition put together, you cover the whole string. So the whole coverage requirement. You cannot miss any character in the original string. So you have this whole coverage requirement. Second, no overlapping. You do not allow, you know, these two substrings, they have some overlap characters. You know, you cannot have that. No overlapping. If these two properties are satisfied, then you get a partition of that original string. Yeah. Here, we do a partition of the original string. After we get that partition, then we use the dictionary to give us the answer. Do we get a valid partition? Oh, the partition that can give us the requirement we need in the question? We need to do that. All right. Preparation. Yeah. Let's try to understand a little more. Yeah. Here, the question, we need to define a subproblem. So remember the dynamic programming, we need to define that subproblem. Okay. So when we define subproblem, so this is the original string. How do we break the original string into pieces? Here, if you try that single piece reduction, that may not work yeah. because the single piece reduction does not guarantee it always works. No, many times it doesn't work. So here we do not use that idea. Okay, all right. So here, the position number is important. One, two, three, the character position, that's important. Why the position numbers are important? Because when we define a substring, we need to use the position numbers. Substring. A substring in the original string, what is the position number of its first character? What is the position number of its last character? That's the important number you need to know for a substring. Okay? All right. Then we try to understand our exist, existence function. Yeah. The dictionary, each substring, when we plug it into this dictionary function, it gives us one or zero answer. If A1 in the dictionary, then we get a one, otherwise zero. Okay? Yeah. And we get this answer in constant time because the time efficiency is also important for us. Okay. All right, then we define a state, a valid state. Here, we call this valid state. Is, we, need, we need to have a name in our discussion. Yeah, so we, here, we just use some relatively simple words in our discussion. Yeah. What state is valid? Invalid. A string, if a string is packed with a sequence of words, then we call it is in a valid state. Otherwise, it's not a, in a valid state. Okay? Yeah. So that's how we call it. Yeah. Just some simple way to call it. Okay? Next, then we can do more discussion. Now we are ready to define this subproblem. All right. Okay, so what is the subproblem? So we need to describe a substring. Okay. Yeah. As I gave you in the previous slide, in order to describe substring, we only need to use two position numbers. The starting point and the end point. Okay. 
yeah so all right so we still yeah so we use the you know dictionary but this time we modify yeah because original version we use ai substring this time because we will use the position numbers to describe a substring so this time we pass the position number version dictionary so then it tells us s from character i through character j that substring is in the dictionary yep a modified version of our dictionary function okay yeah all right then the subproblem is easy to be defined in this way for a substring starting with position i and ending with position j we define function f i j two variables two integer variables in this way okay one zero okay. one means if s the substring is valid Remember our valid meaning in the previous slide? The substring can be break it, can be broken into multiple words. That means valid. Okay? Yeah. F I J equals one if S I J is valid. Otherwise, zero. Yeah. Here I hope you can see the difference between fij and dick ij. You can see the difference because this is the whole string is in the dictionary. Okay, sij. Here we do not require the whole string in the dictionary. We require this substring can be further broken into pieces, and each piece is a word. Yeah, so. You should notice the difference. Then you won't get confused. Yeah. The question, how to calculate fij value recursively? That's our goal. Okay? If you can calculate recursively, if you can find the answer f of 1n, you solve our original problem. Because our original problem, we want to know if the whole string S starting from 1, ending with M, is that a valid string? Or in the valid state? Right? Yeah. You can use a you know better word. Yeah. So I couldn't find the appropriate word. I just used that valid. Okay? But I believe, you know, someone can find a better word. Yeah. All right. Recurrence relation. Now let us define, uh, derive this recurrence relation. Yeah. This part is, you know, relatively hard. Yeah. Hard to understand. Yeah. All right. So now, so we start from this point. The brute force method, yeah, so here, you know, we don't want to try the brute force method. Too many possibilities. How can you try it? We don't want to try it, okay? Too, too complicated, too expensive. Yeah. So we need to find a better way to do it. Yeah. All right. Now, for the sub-problem, can we split, divide and conquer, right? Can we divide? the subproblem into two smaller subproblems. So the the point where we do the division k, position k, the position k between i and j. So we split it into two subproblems. Can we do that? Yeah, this is another way to derive recurrence relation for dynamic programming. Yeah. Split somewhere, anyway. It could be anyway. Okay. Yeah. Critical property. But when we do that, we need to use a critical property. So what's that? 
Okay. If f of i k is valid and f of j k j is valid, then f of i j is valid. This observation is so critical for the solution yeah. because if f of i k valid, that means this part you can break into multiple words. The second part is valid. You can also break into multiple words. Then you put them together, concatenation, put them together, then you can use that, you know, same set of words, you can break the fij substring into those words. So that's true. Yeah. This probably helps us to derive recurrence relation. Yeah. How? First, this and is important. What's the meaning of this and? And here means logic, logical and operation. Logic and operation. What's that? When this is true, both true, okay? This valid means this function value equals one. That means it's true. Valid, that means the second function equals one. It's also true, both true, true and true, logic and operation, right? So this and corresponds to the logic and operation. Okay, all right. That's the first observation. Logic and. Yeah. Second, we need to consider all the possibilities for k, right? k can be starting from i, right? k can start from i, you know, i plus 1, i plus 2, you know, all the way to, to, to what? To j minus 1, okay? Yeah. j minus 1, yeah. because in that way we can split into two substrings. Yeah. Then we combine all all the cases, right? Yeah, because you have all these possibilities. You need to combine all these possibilities. What do you mean combine here? What's the exact meaning of combination here? Logic all. How do you combine? You use logic all operation. Why? Because the first case possible, second case possible, you know, each case possible, but you only need one of the cases true, right? You do not need all cases true, right? You only need one of the cases true. That's the all. Okay? If you need all the cases true, that's n, right? Yeah. So our the first part, we need both true, so we use n. But for the second part, we want to combine all the cases. We don't need all the cases true. We only need one of the cases true. So we use logic or operation. Okay. After this analysis, now we put things together. We can write the recurrence relation immediately. F of ij equals what? Okay. First, look at this. For each internal, this logic all this that's the notation of logic all okay yeah notation logic all okay so we split into two substrings at k logic all okay sorry not logical logic and yeah logic and all right yeah not logic all okay yeah logic and first then we consider all the possible k okay in that case we use this logic all this is logic all okay logic and logic all okay all right that's not enough because the whole string could be a word we need to include that that's the dictionary function of ij we also combine with logic all another logic all okay so this is our recurrence relation. This recurrence relation, it is different from our 
old traditional formula, we use logic and logic all. It's fine because we will get the values, right? No matter we use logic and logic all, we will get zero or one value. So we want we want that kind of values. Yeah. All right. Finally, we want to find this value. One or zero. One, it tells us we can split into words. Zero tells us there is no way you can split into words. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, we solve the problem. Here, the hard part is try to understand using logic and logic all and how to split the substring. Then you can understand the solution. All right, so let's complete part 8.3.